I'm Chris Hunter, Director of the Health Services Department for Orange County. This is a training video for individuals, families, and friends who may need to administer naloxone for suspected opioid overdoses. Rates of opioid overdoses and overdose deaths have increased both locally and at the national level, becoming a major public health threat. As a friend or family member of someone who has taken an opioid drug like heroin or oxycodone, you may be able to reverse a potential overdose and save their life. By the end of this video, you should be familiar with the signs and symptoms of an opioid overdose and also how to administer naloxone with an intranasal spray and an intramuscular auto-injector. Today, we will discuss heroin and other opiates, how the reversal drug naloxone works, and how to recognize and respond to a potential overdose, how to administer naloxone, and some frequently asked questions about the use of naloxone by a consumer, bystander, and loved one. Opioid drugs are synthesized from the seed pod of the Asian opium poppy plant. This class of drugs includes heroin, morphine, fentanyl, as well as oxycodone, an ingredient in Percocet, and hydrocodone, an ingredient in Vicodin. They may be in powder, liquid, and pill form, and may be smoked, injected, snorted, or swallowed. Opiate drugs, including heroin and oxycodone, bind to special receptors in the brain, inducing the release of a chemical called dopamine that is responsible for pain relief, euphoria, drowsiness, and a decreased respiratory rate. In an overdose, breathing stops completely, and within minutes, the individual will die without intervention. While some overdoses are purposeful, many illegally obtained drugs are ingested without knowing the exact dose, or even the exact drug taken, increasing the risk of accidental overdose. Naloxone, also known by the trade name Narcan, removes the opioid from its receptor and blocks further binding, immediately reversing the effects of the opiate drug. This increases respiratory drive, potentially saving the life of an overdose victim. Naloxone is safe, acts quickly, and may be administered through the nose as a nasal spray or with an auto-injector, like an EpiPen, to an unresponsive person. To successfully deploy naloxone, one must assess the patient, administer the drug, and reassess the patient. If you suspect someone has overdosed, the first thing you should do is call 911 or tell someone with you to call them. If you're using a cell phone, you can put it on speaker and listen to the instructions while you assess the patient. First, assess for unresponsiveness by calling out, shaking their shoulders, and attempting to arouse them. Look for signs of an overdose, such as known drug use, paraphernalia like syringes or pill bottles, and clinical signs like decreased or absent breathing, small pinpoint pupils, and the bluish discoloration of the lips or nail beds. When in doubt, administer naloxone. It is safe and will not harm someone who hasn't overdosed. There are two potential methods to administer naloxone, an intranasal spray or an auto-injector. First, we will show a short video with instructions on intranasal kits. The appropriate use of Narcan nasal spray can help you save a life. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. As with any drug, you need to be aware of important safety information concerning its use. If you encounter someone who is unresponsive and you suspect an overdose, first shake their shoulders and shout their name. Kevin. Ask if he or she is okay. Hey, can you hear me? Check for signs of an overdose, unresponsive to touch or voice. Breathing is slow, uneven, or has stopped. Snoring, gasping, or gurgling sounds. Fingernails or lips are blue or purple. Administer Narcan nasal spray as quickly as possible if someone is unresponsive and an opioid overdose is suspected, even when in doubt, because prolonged respiratory depression may result in damage to the central nervous system or even death. Lay the person on their back to receive a dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove Narcan nasal spray from the box. Peel back the tab with the circle to open it. Remove and review the printed quick start guide inside the package. Hold the Narcan nasal spray with your thumb on the bottom of the plunger and your first and middle fingers on either side of the nozzle. Do not press the plunger to test or prime the device. If you do, you will waste all or part of the dose of medication. Tilt the person's head back and provide support under the neck with your hand. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until your fingers on either side of the nozzle are against the person's nose. 
Press the plunger firmly to give the full dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove the device from the nostril after giving the dose. After you have given this medication, seek emergency help right away. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. I'm with somebody who stopped breathing. I, I think they've had an overdose. Move the person on their side after giving Narcan nasal spray. If possible, put their hands under their head and bend their upper leg forward. This helps prevent the person from rolling onto their stomach. This is known as the recovery position. Continue to watch the person closely. If they do not wake up or respond to your voice or touch, or if they do not seem to be breathing normally within two to three minutes, use a new Narcan nasal spray to give an additional dose in the other nostril. Acute opiate withdrawal symptoms may occur from use of Narcan nasal spray in patients who are opioid dependent. Symptoms include body aches, diarrhea, increased heart rate or tachycardia, fever, runny nose, sneezing, goosebumps, also known as piloerection, sweating, yawning, nausea or vomiting, nervousness, restlessness or irritability, shivering or trembling, abdominal cramps, weakness and increased blood pressure. When the emergency is over, put the Narcan nasal spray back in its box and throw it away in a place that is away from the reach of children. Now, we will show instructions for the auto-injector device. Do pull Evzio from the case. Follow the voice instructions activated by pulling off the outer case. Yes, Evzio has a voice that guides you. Do pull off the red safety guard. Place black end of Evzio against the middle of the outer thigh, through clothing if needed. Then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Injection complete. After administration, there will be either a response or no response. If the patient was suffering from an opiate overdose, naloxone will quickly produce a dramatic effect. The patient will become arousable and increase breathing in a matter of minutes. They are also likely to show signs of an opioid withdrawal, commonly including vomiting, nausea, sweating, anxiety, increased heart rate and blood pressure, and agitation. Withdrawal from opioids can be dramatic and unpleasant, but it's not life-threatening. It's imperative that these patients are evaluated by EMS even if they are now awake and alert. The effects of naloxone wear off faster than some opiates and patients are at risk for returning to their overdose state without further assistance. Do your best to keep them calm until EMS arrives, but do not allow them to leave. If the patient begins vomiting, make sure they're turned on to their side to avoid aspiration. If the patient was not suffering from an opioid overdose, naloxone will have no effect at all. There are still many potential causes for their unresponsiveness. At this point, you should consider initiating CPR and utilization of an AED. EMS can assume further care upon their arrival. In review, make sure to call 911. If you suspect an overdose, administer naloxone. Place the person on their side if they begin to vomit. Stay with the patient until EMS arrives and tell them you have administered naloxone. Now for some frequently asked questions. Is naloxone safe? Yes. Side effects and complications are very rare. Naloxone has almost no effect on a patient who has not taken an opiate drug. Is it safe for a pregnant woman? Yes. The benefit to the mother and fetus greatly outweigh the minimal risks of naloxone administration. Will naloxone work on other drug overdoses such as cocaine or alcohol? No. Naloxone will only reverse the effects of an opioid drug. Am I protected against a lawsuit for giving a person who is overdosing naloxone? Yes. Florida Statute 381887 provides civil liability immunity for administration of naloxone in the form of a Good Samaritan. Other laws allow individuals to possess, store, and administer the drug without a prescription. Am I protected against a lawsuit for not giving a person who is overdosing naloxone? Yes. Florida Statute 381887 does not create a duty or a standard to administer naloxone. How should it be stored? Naloxone should be kept away from extreme heat or cold, so it may be best to keep it inside. If the patient isn't overdosing and I give them naloxone, will it hurt them? No. If they have taken an opioid drug, it will reverse the effects. If they haven't taken an opioid, nothing will happen. What happens if I am exposed to naloxone? 
Nothing. Accidentally spraying the liquid on your skin will have no effect. If someone has received naloxone for an overdose in the past, will it be effective if they overdose again? Yes, naloxone works repeatedly and regardless of how frequently the patient has used an opioid or how many times they have received a naloxone. What if the patient is in cardiac arrest? Naloxone is unlikely to have an effect on a patient without a pulse, but it will not harm them. What if naloxone does not work? In the event that naloxone administration has no effect, consider beginning CPR and utilizing an automated external defibrillator if it's available. Unarousable individuals unresponsible to naloxone may be in cardiac arrest. Why can't we rely solely on EMS to respond to overdoses? There has been an increase in heroin and other opiate-related deaths in our region. The first person to find someone overdosing has a window of opportunity for immediate reversal of the overdose and potentially a life-saving gesture. This is often a family member or friend. Will increased naloxone availability lead to an increase in drug use? This has not been demonstrated in other communities with increased access to naloxone. Why should we wait for EMS if the person wakes up and wants to leave? The half-life of naloxone is much shorter than many opioid drugs, and when it wears off, they may fall back into an overdose state. What will EMS do upon arrival? Per EMS protocols, a patient who received opiate overdose reversal with naloxone is still considered medically incapacitated and cannot refuse treatment or transport to the emergency room per Florida Statute 401-445. EMS will support breathing and other functions and transport the patient for further evaluation. They may also give additional naloxone if necessary or provide comfort medications for the withdrawal symptoms that reduce nausea and vomiting. In conclusion, you should now be able to identify the signs and symptoms of opioid overdose and understand how to deploy naloxone rescue kits. If you have further questions, please ask your pharmacist or healthcare provider. Thank you for your time and attention.